Catching up on the recent tight end news for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers just in time for our pre-training camp initial 53-man roster projections. We're going to start with the offensive side of the ball on today's episode of the Locked On Bucks podcast. Let's go. You are Locked On Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome to the Locked On Bucks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. We are your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. We thank you for making us your first listen or view of the day. I am James Yarko, joined by my co-host, one Mr. David Harrison. You can check out his written work over at Sports Illustrated's BucksGameDay.com. Check out mine on SBNationsBucksNation.com. And of course, make sure you're following all the action on Twitter at Locked On Bucks, at JRCO underscore Bucks, and at DHarrison82. Thanks again for making the Locked On Bucks podcast your first listener, your first view of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. And in case you missed it over the weekend, your Tampa Bay Buccaneers have signed veteran tight end Kyle Rudolph to a one year deal as far as. I can find right now the finance is still not completely finished uh, on that deal. But this means, James, that the tight end who lives in Saints fans' heads rent-free will now be wearing pewter. And also, by the way, on Twitter Saturday, thanks to uh, some 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 interesting video that Kyle dropped. It was amazing. James, I did a bonus, bonus solo episode uh, talking about the signing. That dropped Thursday uh, afternoon going into the evening. Uh, but now that you've decided to show up to work today, what wow. are your thoughts on the Kyle Rudolph side? Wow. Uh, well, Thursday I was enjoying a concert, so I was not available yeah. to record. Listen, some days. of us work, some of us take leisure activities. It's okay. Well, in my defense, this was a makeup from a postponement in March on an <laughs> evening which I would not have been scheduled to record anyway. Sure. So don't blame okay. me. Blame the Rona hitting a band of members that are all over 60 years old, except for the new lead singer. Anyway, look, Kyle I'm Rudolph. sure I will be sick or busy or have a concert someday as well. We can discuss that after the show. Anyway, uh, Kyle Rudolph joining uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Look, I really like this signing and we've talked about it before. I had brought up uh, quarterback passer ratings when targeting tight ends. You know, when Kyle Rudolph was targeted, that was the number three highest passer rating since 2016. Um, he's a reliable guy. He, you know, is coming off of a season just a couple of years ago where he had over 80% catch rate. And that was with Kirk Cousins at quarterback. So, I mean, the dude literally can catch just about anything thrown his way. And look, his, his ranking among tight ends since 1992 through 11 seasons, he's fifth in receptions with 479, sixth in yards with 4,745, third in touchdowns with 49, and fifth in catch percentage with 68%. Yeah, and th I mean, those are some really standout numbers uh, considering the talented tight ends that have gone through the National Football League since that 92 season. Um, and, and for anybody wondering why 92, football reference, uh, profootballreference.com, that's as far back as they track at least tight end. Snap. So, of course, Rudolph now entering his 12th season of play in the National Football League as a tight end. And James, looking up numbers for this episode, um, I, I was incredibly surprised when I narrowed the field down to how many tight ends uh, or where he would rank among tight ends that have played 12 NFL seasons since 92. Only 11 of them, only 11 tight ends since 1992 have played into a 12th season uh, in the National Football League. Kyle Rudolph is about to be number 12. Uh, of, of that list, Rob Gronkowski. I mean, it, it, because of the season that he missed due to his first retirement, he's actually only got 11 seasons of, of service. So if he were to play this year or if he comes back this year, you know, maybe um, this will also be his 12th season. So even Rob Gronkowski, a, a, a surefire future Hall of Famer, not on that list. But among the tight ends who currently have 12 seasons of play, under their belt, and none of them are active except for one who's not on a roster right now. Uh, and I think he's officially still active, but not again, not not signed, so not playing at this moment. As soon as 
Kyle Rudolph steps on the field for regular season game for the Buccaneers and officially has his 12th season under his belt. He will rank third among all tight ends uh, since 92 that have played in 12 seasons, 20 in receptions, third in receptions, 20 catches away from tying Todd Heap. Let me, let me drop that name on you. I don't know about you. Yeah, when I read that name, it was like, oh, I'm old. I know <laughs> that name. I've I've played Madden with that name, actually, because some of our viewers and listeners are like, who? I got I to gotta Google that guy. Todd Heap uh, on that list, but 20 catches away. So you figure if he stays healthy, he's probably going to hit that number, right? And he'll take over second place behind Jimmy Graham, who is number one with 713 of them. So by my math, Kyle Rudolph only needs about 250 catches this year uh, to overtake Jimmy Graham. Not going to happen. Um, he would also be third place in yards, 1,124 yards away from Ty and Tidy for second. So again, not going to happen there. Jimmy Graham uh, has 8,506 yards. Nobody is catching him, which is why I now believe Jimmy Graham will be a Hall of Famer uh, despite the tail of his career. But more on that here in a minute. Touchdowns. Uh, the second Kyle Rudolph steps on the field, James, he is the second most career touchdowns of any tight end that has played 12 NFL seasons since 1992. He is 36 away from tying Jimmy Graham. So that actually could happen uh, in 2022, right? 36 touchdowns. Absolutely. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. Yeah, not? First round pick fantasy draft. Do it. What's great is that these Jimmy Graham <laughs> stats, like 98% of, of these receptions and touchdowns came in like his first four years in the league. Oh. And since then, he's just kind of meandered and been irrelevant except for the occasional touchdown catch from the one yard line for the Chicago Bears. But basically, he's <laughs> been useless for like a decade. Um, so you, you go back, Kyle Rudolph, pride of Cincinnati, graduate of Elder High School, which is about 35 minutes away from me. What makes this production that much more impressive? And these come from our good friend, the godfather of the Locked On Bucks podcast, Greg Amon of The Athletic. The quarterbacks that he has caught touchdown passes from, Christian Ponder, 13, Kirk Cousins, 11, Sam Bradford. There's another kind of blast from the past, the, the richest man to ever suck at quarterback. Eight touchdown passes from him. Case Keenum, seven. Teddy Bridgewater, six. Matt Castle, two. Joe Webb, one. Daniel Jones, one. So Graham had 51 touchdown catches in his first five years. I was I was close on the on the four years with the Saints alone. He only has 34 touchdown receptions in the seven years since leaving New Orleans, going to Seattle, going to Chicago, bouncing around. Uh, again, basically useless since he left New Orleans. But yeah, I mean, this is the first time that Kyle Rudolph has played with a, dare I say, legit yeah. NFL quarterback. I mean, Teddy Bridgewater, you know, like, again, this is pre-knee injury Teddy Bridgewater. Right. So he right. was kind of like the up and coming, could have been like the next great you know NFL quarterback. That knee injury definitely derailed, derailed him. But like Case Keenum, this was after or maybe right in the midst of his like quote unquote comeback, Kirk Cousins has kind of always been out. I mean, yeah, that's that is I mean Christian Ponder, most famous for being Sam Ponder's husband. Like that's just that's just craziness uh, on that list right there. I wonder what Kyle Rudolph would have done if he had five years of Drew Brees before Drew Brees' arm fell off. So that's good news uh, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, and keeping in tradition with Kyle Rudolph and his awesome sense of humor, our thumbnail also features the New Orleans Saints today. So make sure if you're not checking out on YouTube, you go check out the YouTube page to see. All that gloriousness. Uh, but some more good news. Rookie tight end Cade Otten, um, also known for breaking people's hearts while wearing purple, was cleared for practice ahead of training camp, which begins on the 27th of July. So, James, the Bucks tight end room suddenly looks stacked once again, even though Rob Gronkowski uh, is choosing to hang out with a model while Tom Brady chooses to hang out with sweaty big men. Um, all four of them may or may not. And, of course, by them, I'm also including Co Keith, who has obviously been someone we've talked about uh, as well, and Cam Brait. Will, will they all make the initial 53-man roster? We will tell you our pre-training camp projections here in just a moment. But first, betonline.net is your fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Also find reviews and news of, of every league, including Major League Baseball and the Red Sox experience, uh, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, Esports and even golf. You really had to stress that even. Didn't Listen, you? I didn't write it, but I do love that it's in there. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in game betting scores and podcasts. 
They have you covered. So head to bet online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today and find lines like over under eight and a half sacks for Buccaneers outside linebacker Shaquille Barrett in 2022. If you want to take the under or the over, preferably the over, uh, you can head to bet online to do that because bet online is where the game starts. Thanks again for making the Locked on Bucks podcast your first listen or view every day. Offensive roster projections for the initial 53-man roster ahead of training camp. And James, let's start with the hard part, the quarterback position. Well, I mean, they don't really have a locked and loaded starter, so there's going to be the training camp competition questions. Uh, Yeah, quarterback, it's pretty simple in my opinion. There's going to be three on the 53-man. That's Brady. Blaine Gabbard and Kyle Trask. Same as last year, they are not going to try to stash Kyle Trask on a practice squad where he can get plucked away. They'll take that risk with uh, my lifelong hero, Ryan Griffin, who gets to show up and practice and make lots of money doing it, but never actually has any pressure on him. So, yeah, this this is the easiest slam dunk outside of our specialists, uh, Brady Gabbard Trask. Yeah, absolutely. Ryan Griffin, everybody's hero. Um, literally the healthiest quarterback to ever play more than 10 years for the same team. I don't know if he's at 10 years yet, actually, but he's you get the close. point. Yeah, you get the point. So I'm not going to spend any more time on quarterbacks. We got it. Going, mo- Moving on to running backs. Honestly, this may be uh, just as set, but really kind of the order of things is, is really where I think the question comes in. I've got four running backs on my initial 53-man roster. Of course, Leonard Fournette, despite apparently a coach being unhappy about his 260 pounds, which Leonard says was not 260 pounds. Either way, that's a big dude. I'm not arguing weight with him, okay? Um, My second back, Rashad White, rookie out of Arizona State. And no, that is not Arizona State bias. That is a true and honest assessment of the situation at hand. Giovanni Bernard, I've got him listed as three. I mean, on the depth chart, like, does it really, really matter? I don't know. But to somebody out there, it might. So Giovanni Bernard, I've got listed as my third running back. Obviously, a receiving guy. Obviously, if he's on the uh, if he's on the field, it's Charles Sims time. The defense knows nobody's running the ball with Giovanni Bernard in the backfield anymore these days. Uh, and then Keyshawn Vaughn, I do have him on the roster listed as fourth. Again, though, the versatility of the offensive scheme, the versatility uh, across the the roster, really any of these guys could be on the field at any given moment, depending on the scheme situation and circumstances. Yeah, I mean, I have the same four. If we're going to give them in depth chart order. I'm going to shake mine up just a little bit, at least if we're if we're prepping this in terms of week one. Obviously, uh, you know, shredded Lenny out there with his videos and his his tree trunk thighs and back in shape and tearing it up. He's locked and loaded. Number one, my number two to start the season is going to be Gio Bernard. I, I do think that he'll come into the years. The number two back, we're going to see him probably in a not quite two to one ratio of Rashad White to start, maybe one and a half to to one. But for the first couple of weeks, I think Geo is going to be the locked and loaded number two, going to be that third down back. Rashad White, who's my number three, is going to get his share of snaps, but I don't think he enters the season as the number two back. And then, of course, Keyshawn Vaughn there at number four. We saw some great things out of him last year. It's on him to battle his way up the up the depth chart, which I think he has the talent to do, but mm-hmm. it's a matter of can he show, you know, Byron Leftwich, Todd Bowles, and most importantly, Tom Brady, that he can be trusted, be relied upon to get his number called more often than Geo, more often yeah. than Rashad White. We don't know, but we've seen we've seen the flashes of the talent that he brings. Now it's about putting together the consistency, earning the trust of the coaches, of his quarterback. But I, I do think probably by time week three, week four, the latest rolls around, we're seeing Rashad White take over that number two role and, and really start to steal some snaps away from Gio Bernard. He's not going to steal many, if any, from Lenny. That was a, a lot of any's. That was that was some nice alliteration. Uh, like but I, I do think probably by week four, the latest, we are seeing a uptick in Rashad White snaps. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, again, this isn't about 
taking away from Leonard Fournette. This is about who are we going to have on hand so that Leonard Fournette doesn't just get run into the ground by week four or week five. So uh, any combination of White Vaughn and Giovanni Bernard, the Buccaneers will be happy as long as they're getting protection. Uh, talking about Keyshawn Vaughn, I mean, I don't know what he did all offseason. I hope what he did was chase around a whole lot of exercise balls, right? I'm talking about like in a grass field, have a buddy throw the exercise ball, you sidestep, shuffle, get in front of it type of deal, work on that foot speed and agility uh, and all those things, and then catching a lot of heavy bags to get ready to pass protect because that's another area uh, that, that Keyshawn Vaughn's going to need to improve in if he wants to be in the backfield with Tom Brady on the playing field uh, a lot more in 2022. Moving into the wide receiver position, um, I have seven players on this list right now. This is where things can kind of get a little bit interesting. I don't know what direction you went with this. I'm not worried right now about like pup lists and, and, and early season IRs and all that. Like I'm not really going to go there. I know like on the commander show, like Chris kind of, and, and more power to him kind of went with like, you know, I think chase young starts on the pup. So right now be with chase on the pup and da, da, da. I get all that. And, and some of our listeners may prefer if we did that, but I'm not, I'm just kind of going with our, our talented roster here. So, I've got seven guys, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and that's why I bring that up in this spot, obviously. Chris Godwin, yeah. again, hopes that there's he's going to be there week one. But look, we don't know exactly, right? We All we have is rumors, conjecture, Cyril Grayson saying a lot of exciting things on the Pure Report uh, podcast, if you haven't checked that out yet. But we don't know 100%. So for right now, I'm keeping him there. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. My third guy is Russell Gage, who I think everybody has as well. Number four, this is where things might kind of skew a little bit, James. I got Brashad Perryman. Um, the veteran, he's done really well for the Buccaneers in the past. I think some people are kind of sleeping on that veteran ability. He obviously knows the playbook. He obviously knows where Tom Brady wants him to be when he wants him to be there. I think Rashad Perryman uh, has got a fighting chance in this. Um, number five, I've got Scotty, Scotty Scooter Miller, um, a little bit more of a niche guy, which is why I kind of have Rashad Perryman maybe taking that next step and, and getting on the roster a little bit more often. Scotty, a little bit more of a guy you know what he's going to do, but you take advantage by putting a lot of guys on the field so the defense can't just hone in. On them, and then I've got Cyril Grayson Jr. number six. I think he builds on some of that momentum. Yeah, that's right. And then Jalen Darden, I've got rounding out my group as my seventh receiver. So no Tyler Johnson on my initial fifty-three man roster. James Jarko, uh, we were we were in sync there for a little while. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we were full on Justin Timberlake, J.C. Chazé, just right dead on, and then nice straight straight at the end. Um, I also have seven receivers. Uh, I also started in order and, and I did the exact same thing you did. I wasn't worried about Godwin on the pup or anything like that. These are just based on the talent. I went Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Russell Gage, Rashad Perryman, Scotty Miller. My number six receiver is Tyler Johnson. Okay. I do think Tyler Johnson makes this team again. We've seen flashes. We've seen Tom Brady trust him in yep. high pressure you know, big time moments. I think that's going to continue. We're going to continue to see him flourish and, and grow as a wide receiver. Then my number seven spot, I have Cyril Grayson. I do nice. not have Jalen Darden on this roster. He yeah. did not show me enough as a returner or a receiver to trust him moving forward. When you had guys like Cyril Grayson step up and play big in big moments, uh, especially due to injury or, mental breakdowns mm -hmm. and and i think if you're looking at it talent for talent there's more upside and already more proven ability out of tyler johnson than there yeah. is out of jalen darden i i feel mm -hmm. like the bucks can find a returner somewhere on this roster and they don't need to keep jalen darden around strictly for that and everything you just said i 100 percent agree on and that last part is exactly why i have darden on this list right now because if we weren't doing this again, and this is spoiler alert for all of our listeners and viewers, we are going to do this again at the end of the preseason. If we weren't doing this again, the preseason, I would probably have Tyler Johnson there instead of Jalen Darden, because I, I hope that they figure out a way. Maybe it's Scotty Miller. Maybe it's Cyril Grayson Jr. I don't know, but that they find a, re a return special somewhere else uh, on this roster, because the ironic thing is if I have Tyler Johnson on my list, he's actually ahead of Cyril Grayson, just like you. So he goes from being my my fifth receiver or my sixth receiver to not even on the on the roster. Like that's that's how important the return job is. But for right now, I don't see a better option. That's why Jalen Darden makes my pre camp initial fifty three. We'll see what happens in camp and the preseason. All right. Well, so far, David, you and I are pretty much on the same page. Very very 
few differences between our two offensive rosters. We are going to wrap up with the offensive linemen and the tight ends coming up in just a moment. But first, level with me. We have all been in a situation at some point in our lives when we're a little tight on cash and maybe you could only afford to put a few gallons of gas in your tank or you've got another save the date and are wondering how you're going to buy a gift for the happy couple that is where dave can help dave is the banking app that can help you get up to 500 dollars instantly with extra cash that's more money to fill your tank buy a wedding gift catch up on bills whatever the case may be you can finally tackle those expenses that have been stressing you out without any hang-ups at all there's no interest there's no credit check needed Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial relief they need with extra cash. So if you're in a pinch, you need a little extra help, download Dave and think of it as a helping hand from future you. Download the Dave app in the App Store right now. That's D-A-V-E. Sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve member FDIC. Future you will thank you. Wrapping things up here with our initial 53-man roster projections. Looking at the offensive side of the ball. Defense coming up for you tomorrow. But David... Let's go ahead and dive into the offensive line. I have nine players on the offensive line, and I'll be honest, I realize with running backs and wide receivers, we kind of listed them in order. I have not listed this in any sense of order whatsoever, but I think the first five are pretty much locked and loaded. Ryan Jensen, Donovan Smith, Tristan Wirfs, Shaq Mason, Luke Gedeke. They're mm. not going to waste a second-round pick on a guy that they are not keeping around on this team, especially one that can play like Gedeke. You got Robert Hainsey. You got Aaron Stinney, who's going to compete for that starting job. You have Nick Leverett. And I know it's going to pain some Bucks fans to hear me say this name. It pains me a little bit to say it. Hopefully, he changes my mind during training camp, and, and I'm more excited. But I think Josh Wells is still on this team for some depth. Uh, we saw a lot of offensive linemen go down last year. I don't think they're going to short themselves in this situation. I could even see them carrying six receivers and 10 offensive linemen just yeah. to make sure that they are prepared for anything that might come their way. But those are those are my nine. Jensen Smith, Wirfs, Mason, Gedeke, Hainsey, Stinney, Leverett, and Wells. Uh, yeah, pretty much the same. Uh, not quite the same, though. Um, I have nine as well. So full disclosure, if, you know, again, uh, we plug it every, every episode, but if you, if you go to bucksgameday.com, uh, back on July, something July 12th, back on July 12th, uh, I published my 53 man roster projection for the Buccaneers. Now, obviously in July 12th, Kyle Rudolph was not a member of the roster. So that, that changes things uh, a little bit, it either kicks a tight end off or it kicks somebody else off. I kicked off a lineman. I had 10 offensive linemen at first. Uh, so now I'm trimming it down to nine. I did go in order. And again, this is where uh, the approach is different, right? I went with a pre-training camp, a true pre-training camp uh, depth chart. Uh, from left to right, I've got Donovan Smith, Aaron Stinney, Ryan Jensen, Shaq Mason, and Tristan Wirfs. Now, Shaq Mason, I know some people are like, oh, yeah, that's the left guard. He played a lot of right guard in New England. Like, look, the dude's guard, okay? So, I mean, maybe he's left, maybe he's right. So, don't get caught up too much in that. But I do have Aaron Sidney as the starter in my pre-training camp depth chart. Why? Uh, because he's the only one with NFL experience. Like, let's let's be honest. Like, Lou Gedeke, I'm excited to see uh, what he can do. I agree with you that you don't spend the draft capital you do on him to be a career backup, but to be a one-year backup, potentially. So, we'll sure. see how it works. But, again, that's why I love the fact that we're doing this after and before because, again, this is pre-training camp. So we'll look at what Stinney and Gedeke do during camp. Now behind them, I also have Josh Wells uh, as a backup tackle. I have Gedeke, obviously, Robert Hainsey, uh, your favorite, and Carmen Vitale's favorite. I had Fred Johnson and Nick Leverett as my last two offensive linemen. I think I'm going with Johnson. Interesting. Because that gives me that gives me two backup tackles, Trist or not Tristan, 
wow, fire me now. Josh Wells and Fred Johnson as backup tackles. And then it gives me Gedeke and Hainsey as backup interior offensive linemen with Hainsey playing possibly center guard. And he has some tackle experience uh, as well. So that's so while I prefer Nick Leverett for the for the interest of symmetry, basically, that's expert analysis. I'm going to go with Fred Johnson. I think if I had to, if I had put this together with it, my initial starting five offensive linemen, I'm right mm. there with you. I would pencil in Aaron Stinney pre-training camp as the yeah. starter over Luke Gedeke. I think by the time we revisit this after training camp, we're looking at Gedeke as probably being the starter. But, yep. and again, Aaron Stinney, when he filled in uh, for Alex Kappa, he was playing that right guard position. So, you know, you could still have uh, Shaq Mason over on the left side. You could have Stinney or Gedeke on the right side. What's great about all three of these guys is they can pretty much play both guard positions. You can figure yep. out which side they're stronger on. And, and you can build your offensive line that way. But I'm with you 100%. I think Stinney, starting on Wednesday, uh, you know, the first day of training camp, he is going to be part of the starting five. Yeah, I mean, and, and exactly. I mean, July 27th, it could be Aaron Stinney in the starting five. August 27th, it could be Luke Gedeke. Absolutely oh. uh, open to that possibility. So moving to tight ends, uh, my original projection, I had three tight ends. Now I have four. This is where the depth chart order is going to get interesting. Pre-training camp, Cam Bray is tied in number one for me. Kyle Rudolph is tied in number two. Kate Otten, the rookie who, like we just talked about in segment one, has been cleared for training camp practice, is tied in number three. Co'Keefe, the other rookie who's been making some waves, is tied in number four, and we take four tight ends into the regular season. I had the exact same four in the exact same order. Again, they're, they they yeah, brought in Kyle Rudolph. And I know people are talking about just because they sign him doesn't mean he's going to make the team. Yes, Kyle Rudolph is going to make this team. He's a reliable set of hands for Tom Brady. We've laid that out uh, numerous times on numerous episodes now, whether it was speculation or post-signing. Um, and Kate Otten, you now you don't have to force the issue with him. Now he can come mm -hmm. along at his own speed, coming off of an injury, preparing himself in this offense, building the trust with Tom Brady. It's it's the perfect situation for all the tight ends involved. I do think Cameron Braid is probably going to get a few more targets than Kyle Rudolph. But look, even last year when Gronk was injured, when you know OJ wasn't getting attention, Cam Braid was the number one tight end. He still wasn't getting a lot of targets. It just meant more targets for the wide receiver. So I don't know. Maybe Brady is going to gravitate towards Rudolph a little bit more, given his yep. abilities, given his history in the NFL. And we could see Kyle Rudolph being the number one tight end. But again, we're talking starting July 27th, pre-training camp, 53-man roster. I'm with you. Brady is number one, Rudolph number two, Otten number three, and Keeft number four. Regardless, can't wait. I mean, uh, th that's an exciting group. Like I liked it anyway. I was excited to see what Coke Keefe is going to do. I'm still excited to see what Coke Keefe is going to do. But now with with Kyle Rudolph on in that mix, it's just it just has a whole different feel to it. I I, I don't know. Maybe I'm alone on that. But I I'm looking very very forward to it. And, and Mr. Yarko, we will be in Tampa in uh, just over two weeks to witness the greatness, the craziness. Actually, three weeks. Now that I do math correctly. No, um, two weeks. You were right. Is it two weeks? It is two. And that's yeah. Yeah. Two weeks from today. From the time we are recording this, I will be arriving, and uh, yeah, we're gonna have we're gonna have a good old time down yeah. there watching training camp. Uh, both I'm gonna go from Carson Wentz training camp practices to Tom Brady training camp practices, and then back to Carson Wentz. Well, if you start <laughs> to miss the issues with Carson Wentz, don't oh forget goodness. that you also get to watch Tua Tagovailoa. Oh my God. I'm so excited <laughs> to watch two of my Uh The last time I saw the dolphins practice against the Buccaneers, that was 2019. Ryan Fitzpatrick was a dolphin nearly took off my head and, and uh, Mark cooks had may rest in peace. Uh, Cause Mark was not paying attention. He was busy tweeting from the general was a general Fitzpatrick, right? Uh, Twitter account or he's a captain. Fitzpatrick. I can't remember what rank he gave him. Um, yeah. I can't remember either. But he was literally in the middle of tweeting from that account as we're sitting on the sidelines and a bullet misses Mike Gusecki and comes right towards us. And I kind of like in, in that moment, I'm like, I'm going to I'm either going to try to catch this and either have a brief moment of applause 
or a lifetime on Twitter, TikToks, whatever, getting drilled in the face by this football, or I'm just going to casually back somersault my way out of this thing. And I did not have time to warn Mark. So fortunately, I missed him anyway. Uh, but this time, when Tua does that, I'll have all the time in the world. I'll just get up, dust myself off, walk off the side, because that's uh, it's not the same kind of cannon, buddy. Yeah. Uh, last time I was at training camp, I completed a pass to Antonio Brown that had sailed out of the back of the end zone and hit me in the leg. Uh, I don't think I'll be doing that this time around. That should have been a lawsuit. You missed your boat. <laughs> anyway, we are going to be back tomorrow wrapping up our 53-man roster projections pre-training camp with the defense and the specialists. But we want to thank you all for making the Locked On Bucks podcast your first listen or view of the day. Now make your second listen to the Locked On NFL podcast. Our national NFL experts and insiders keep fans dialed in with the biggest stories and the latest news from around the league because an offseason does not equal a break in action. If you have questions, comments, reactions to our roster projections, go ahead and leave us a voicemail at 813-444-5841, or you can send us an email at LockedOnBucksPodcast at gmail.com. Check out David's written work over at BucksGameDay.com. Check out mine at BucksNation.com. And make sure that you are following along on Twitter at Locked On Bucks, at JRCO underscore Bucks, and at DHarrison82. Hope you all have an absolutely outstanding day. Stay safe, stay healthy, fire the cannons. We thank you so much for joining us right here at Locked On Bucks.